Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. I'm a doctor working in London. In this video, I want to help you guys understand how to learn better by going through the five key scientifically proven steps in learning and how you can apply that to learn absolutely anything. Anyone who's spoken to me recently will know that I've been super into the idea of metacognition recently thinking of thinking, learning to learn, and learning to use our brain more effectively. Since medical school and taking my exam last year, I've had to remember copious amounts of information, and I've reformatted my study method a million times, and trust me, I have tried every single technique. I've tried writing notes, I've tried typing my notes, I've tried doing mind maps, I've tried using a tablet and writing them on an iPad, flashcards, Excel sheets, putting it all over a wall. I've tried merging methods, I've tried different study timing techniques like the Pomodoro or block studying technique, sleep depriving and sleep excess. I've gone through all sorts of methods. Every single person learns differently and through my years in school and then medical school, I've come to find what works for me but it didn't come easy. What I wanted to find out was what made a study technique effective. Why was I able to learn more when I was writing versus reading? What was the ultimate way to leverage synaptic plasticity? And I guess what external factors you can control and take advantage for your learning. Every student has their individual challenges when it comes to learning. And I think that a lot of us on our journey struggle and trial different techniques. And as a result of not finding that one that works for us, our academic results can struggle. I wanted to find a way to explain the discrepancies between how we learn and our study method and build a framework that absolutely anyone could use to learn, regardless of what kind of learner they were, to take back ownership of the way they learn. So I started reading and I started breaking things down and grabbing a mental model off Elon Musk, which is the order of first principles, I tried to go to the very fundamentals of learning and each individual study method, removing any assumptions that we made about studying and building our strategy based on this. The task ultimately was to form memory, was to take information, process it, and then incorporate it into our brain and memory. Breaking it down even further, it is the formation of accessible neural synaptic patterns that code for a desired stimuli and is accessible and retrievable. I tried to understand how exactly our brain worked and the neuroscience behind how our brain actually forms memory between neurons. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video because I've already spoken about it previously, but I will leave the link up here and in the description below. What I found was breaking down every single study technique and effective method that I've used, the one thing that they had in common was that all of them used five key steps. Each of these five steps were backed up by decades of scientific experimentation and psychology. And what's more is that all the principles were easy to use for absolutely anyone in any field doing whatever task, not just for learning and studying. The five key steps of this framework are, number one, exposure. Number two, understanding. Number three, learning. Number four, space repetition. And number five, application. And I know you're going to say to me, but Matt, that is so simple. You know, you're right, it is simple, but that's exactly my point. The process of learning and solidifying memory is simple. You get information, you receive it, you process it, and then you either store it or it gets replaced by even more information. Stripping away all the fancy names, techniques, gadgets of every single learning discipline, you are left with those five key principles and that essentially mimics the way that our brain forms memory. I call it a framework because it gets rid of all the fancy terminology and gadgets and stuff that are typically associated with techniques. So let's go through. The first thing to mention is that you can't do one step without having completed the next one. You can't understand something if you've never seen it, you can't learn it if you haven't already understood it, and you can't actively practice and repeat something that you don't even remember. Step one is exposure, and this is receiving information through auditory, visual, or sensory means. 
in the broadest sense, it does mean things like your sensations in fingertips or what you're smelling or anything that your brain perceives as information. But for the purposes of this activity, let's stick to the ways that we learn and study. Your senses receive this information and then send it to the brain to process. The next step is understanding. And the most important thing for when you're trying to process information in your brain is to break it down into small, understandable segments. And this can be done through various methods such as connecting the new information to old existing memories, connecting it to various concepts or ideologies in your brain, an increased awareness of this topic or concept, an increased awareness of what you are trying to learn, or socially supported discussions or motivations such as group learning. Next, once you've understood a concept is that you then have to learn it. And when I say learn it, I mean to make an active decision among your brain to actually try and incorporate this information into your memory. I put this step separately and I highlight the word conscious because you and your brain need to actively make a decision to incorporate this piece of information into your memory. By telling your brain, I need to remember this, it shoots up in your head and it will prioritize learning that piece of information. And this can be in the form of consciously drawing out mind maps, writing notes, or even leaving a mental note to yourself while you're thinking about a topic. The fourth step is space repetition, and this is undoubtedly one of my favorite topics just because of how effective it has been for me. In 1885, the father of experimental memory research, Ebbinghaus, describes the forgetting curve. The graph shows memory loss over time and illustrates that the first time you learn something, you lose it at an exponential rate. You actually lose most of it in the first few days, after which the rate tapers off. How do we prevent this? If we review it again and again, the strength of the memory is increased and the decay is reduced. Every review refreshes your position on the curve and strengthens retention. Furthermore, by strategically spacing out the time between each session, you can review the materials less but still be able to retain the same amount of knowledge. Essentially, use it or lose it. Your brain is only going to remember memory that it thinks it's going to need in the future. This can be a natural repetition, such as something that you're seeing or working on every single day in textbooks or in your work, or you can create it artificially through methods like flashcards or notes. And I'm definitely going to make a video about this down the line because I'm a huge fan of using Anki for flashcards. So if you'd like to see that, definitely press that subscribe button to be notified when it comes out. Finally, once you have learned all this information, you can then use the information and apply it to your problem. Once again, the same principle applies in that the more you use it, the more important that your brain will establish it is and the more you will retain. Once you understand the five core principles of learning, you can then come to understand your own study process and then learn to build things that work for you. How you facilitate your learning is equally as important as the learning process itself. Appreciating the flow of information from exposure to retaining in your head to understanding and learning it before forming it as long-term memory. Having a strategy lets you learn maximal content in the least amount of time in the most effective way to retain it in the long term. And you know, there's no point in buying an iPad and using your flashy Apple Pencil to write notes or having super cushy flashcard apps that you scroll through but have no idea what they do for you. Knowing the five core steps of this framework allows you to understand how information is made so that you can take back ownership of the way that you learn. Following this, you can then optimize the way you learn. And this is where the fancy gadgets and tools and tech come in. It's about finding a combination of things that work for you in every single stage to bring out the best both for you and your learning. And what I would advise you doing is actually looking at each individual step, finding out what works for you in terms of how much time you spend or what tips work best for you or what strategies or approaches, such as for example, learning. Some people would prefer maps over notes and vice versa. And then once you've established what you want your approach to be for each section, you can then think about what tools you want to aid you in that. So my task for all of you today is this. Challenge the way you learn. Does your study method fit in with these five steps? And if not, break it down to the core principles and ask yourself, is this the most effective way that information is going to be retained in my head? What do you think you can change? Let me know in the comment section below because I would be curious to know how this worked for you guys. 
I also want to make videos to break down each individual section of this framework to see how we can optimize them and what tools that I use for each step. So if you wanted to see that, definitely let me know as well so I can work on them. I'd love if you can subscribe to the channel and send this to one or two of your friends. It really helps my channel grow and I would love to be able to spread my message to even more people. But for now, that is it. So I will see you guys in the next one.